Hey, it's Kelly Alexander, and we are very happy to be joined by such a superstar from the world of General Hospital, Jason Thompson, a.k.a. Uh, Dr. Patrick Drake. Welcome to the Kelly Alexander Show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so happy to have you. First of all, a longtime fan of GH, and I, if I've done my research correctly, this is like your 10th anniversary. Do you guys mind keeping it down? We're trying to... <laughs> Um, is it 10th, 10th anniversary? Did yeah, you start in 2005? Somebody, I guess I was. Yeah, yeah, 2005. Yeah. What does it November. feel like? So it'll be next November, I think. That's crazy. What is it like, you know, being on a show for 10 years on GH, which is such a legacy show? Um, it's 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 fantastic. I mean, to be an actor, to be consistently working for this long is kind of um, amazing feeling, realistically. I don't. It's my. It's the longest by far, obviously, mm -hmm. job that I've ever had, but. Um, it's, I think what, what kind of smartens you up to the idea is uh, doing these little kind of anniversary shows. Like we went through the 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. which is, you know, you start thinking about something that's been on anything for 50 years. It's a very, very long time, especially in the TV world. And then um, we just did another throwback uh, episode to 1963 where we recreated the pilot episode of General Hospital. And then I played Dr. Steve Hardy, who was arguably probably the first, you know, soap opera doctor, um, kind of great in the, in this world. And so it was really great to take that on and, and kind of accept it. And I do it with humility and, and, you know, as much grace as I possibly can, because we wouldn't be in this position if it weren't for so many other actors and crew members and executive producers and writers that have done their job for, you know, the years before us. So for us to have the opportunity to continue the legacy is, um, it's not lost on me. Has it been scary, Jason, with the fact that, because I remember in the 90s, there used to be like 16 soap operas. Yeah. There were so many of them. And now they've all dropped off, including like the guiding lights of the world who had been on right, for yeah. decades and decades. And now Started it's you guys. Radio. Yeah, and now it's you guys and Young and the Restless and Bold and Beautiful and Days of Our Lives. So there's four shows left. Right. Is it scary for you guys as, a, as like, an, an, like a community, like an acting community, thinking like maybe it could still go? Or, or well, yeah, a couple of years ago when, especially on ABC, when One Life to Live and um, All My Children were canceled, we weren't sure what was going to happen. There was like, you know, you're kind of walking on ice on set. We didn't know what was happening. Our executive producer got let go. Our head writers got let go before that. So, you know, we didn't know if we were next or what was going to happen. But we believed that... Um, our fans and and what we did on a daily basis would kind of keep us alive and and I mean I think everybody on our set from actors to crew and everybody else really believed in General Hospital and I I still do believe in General Hospital I think it's a show that kind of sets itself apart um, in a way and and it was different than the other ABC shows and so I'm I think we're all grateful that ABC stuck with us for mm -hmm. sure and um, fans have a lot to do with that as far as an acting community seeing things change there's there's a lot changing. Um, some of it for the better, some of it maybe not necessarily for the better, but what we see with happening with digital, um, online viewing, and um, you know, just cable, there's so many options now. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of acting, there's a lot of shows. There's so many available shows to watch. And, and I hope that, I think that there's a place for daytime still. Mm -hmm. I, I, I still feel that, um, I mean, I don't know anybody. I, a lot of people say that they still record the show. Yeah. So, like, you used to have to watch it live. Well, that's, right. you don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if anybody does anymore, realistically. Mm -hmm. So, there, um, we're still available to a lot of people because of how technology has changed. But at the same time, I think what you get with daytime television, a different way of telling story that you can't get anywhere else. Um, and so, to me, I think it's, um, it's you know, it's, it's part of the American fabric that I, I hope sticks around for a very, very long time, much, much past me. Now, being on, you know, this soap and General Hospital and, and the legacy behind it, um, and knowing the fan support that you have, how important is social media to you? Uh, you know, because I find soap fans are a different breed. Like, they really mm. not only fall in love with the character, but usually they will know who you are in real life. Yeah. As opposed to watching a, you know, a, a nighttime show where we get them once a week, like right. Scandal, for example, but you guys are in our homes five days a week. Right, yeah. Um, I think, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's a balance you have to kind of keep because we still do have private lives, and, and I don't mean that as like private, don't touch it, more mm -hmm. just like, you know, we, these are characters that we play, we're not similar to that, I mean, there might be some similarities to us, mm -hmm. but... You know, um, there are people that um, that want a little bit more of, you know, that separation. Um, but at the same time, it is a great tool to reach out to people, to communicate, to, you know, have gratitude for getting us to this place in a lot of ways. Because if fans don't respond, you know, fans didn't respond to me in the beginning, I, I wouldn't have a job still. Like, mm -hmm. they're very vocal. They, if they don't like you, they, they let you know. And slowly but surely, you'll see if your numbers don't add up, because it is a numbers game, you know, this isn't... 
ABC is not a charity. They don't just right. give away things like this. You know, you have to work for it. And so um, it's a way to kind of, and even doing fan events and everything else, it's, it's a way to say thank you and, and kind of give some time back. And so for me, um, the social media is, you know, I, I'm, I'm decently active on it. I've never had a Facebook. I didn't do that, but I just kind of went straight to Twitter and Instagram. And Instagram for me is I, I love pictures. Twitter for me is a great way to get news related yep. and, and um, so I use it for that um, some people are more active on it some people aren't on it at all but um, I think it's uh, it's going in that direction so the amount of the amount of information that is there and I mean we're, we're, we're asked to help out with social media at work for, whether it's from publicity or executive producer or whatever because I think it's it's pretty evident that um, that everybody uses it or majority of people <laughs> use it and so you know it's another way to just kind of get to the fans and you know thank them and ask them to continue to support us. How does it feel being a Canadian actor, being on this, you know, uh, soap opera in the States, which is obviously seen around the world, but does mm. it feel important? Do you feel still really connected to being a Canadian and, and doing what you do in Hollywood? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to feel very connected to Canada. I still, I'm, I'm, like, way more than majority of my family. I mean, I'm kind of started a life in Los Angeles, obviously, mm -hmm. but my mom and dad and my brothers and, and um, their families and aunts and uncles and grandma and everything else, they're still up in Canada. I have bars and restaurants up there in Edmonton, so I still go back very often. I'm still very much connected to the Canadian uh, culture. And uh, But yeah, I mean, I, th I feel like, you know, Dom and I were talking about it. You feel like you, it's, it's, it's something of a, you know, a dream to go to Los Angeles and to be in the industry and mm -hmm. to be a working actor. You, mm -hmm. you know, you, you kind of... I, I feel personally you start out and that's what you want to do. You want to go to that length. And so to be in Los Angeles, to be part of the acting community, to be going to work every day as an actor, it's, um, you know, that's a pretty amazing feeling. Um, but I do, I do very much respect um, the Canadian um, film industry. Obviously, mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that continue to work up here. I have friends that make stuff up here all yeah. the time that live down in Los Angeles. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, it's, it's fantastic to live in L.A., it's warmer. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is true. <laughs> um, but it's always great to come back, you know. So, and, and that's what General Hospital does. It allows you to kind of be able to come back and say hey to Canadian fans and, um, uh, you know, hang out. Now, I recently actually interviewed uh, Sharon Case from The Young and the Restless, and she mentioned that, you know, she's been on, she just celebrated her 20th year. Okay. Uh, I think this is 20, her 21st, and she said, you know, that she really loves still being on the soap even after right. all these years. Do you see yourself being on General Hospital for, like, years to come? Because obviously you're such a solid character and I would say a pillar of that, that cast. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, there's, you know, as going back to when you kind of start out, when you feel this, I, I never had the idea like, oh, I want to get on a show and just stay there. And, you know, that's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's not, it's nice to have a roof over your head and be able to support yourself and put food on the table for sure. But there's more to the art of it that you want to continue to, to kind of manifest. And, um, so as much as it is amazing to be on a show this consistently, I still continue to audition. I still continue to try and develop other stories and, you know, get myself out there. Um, saying that it's, it's a complete gift to be able to, like I said, go to work every single day and be consistent in an industry that isn't that consistent. Um, but yeah, I think we're always trying to keep it going. We always try and keep that, you know, the art engine running mm -hmm. and um, whether it's music and writing and, and whatever it is. So hard to say. Um, hopefully it's around for a very long time and the option is there for me and, and I respect the genre and I respect General Hospital and everything else very, very much and all the people I work with. But it's hard to say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't sit here right now and say, man, I hope I'm there for another 20 years. Okay. But at the same time, that's a fantastic option, <laughs> okay. you know, if it continues to go that way. But, you know, life changes. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Might have 17 kids and that's need to stay there. I might <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'll move back to Canada and open a ranch. To, yeah, south of France <laughs> and just hang out and make wine. I, I don't know, you know. It changes. So, um, and I'm... I mean, I'm, I'm very much aware of that. Awesome. Jason, thank you so much for Absolutely. spending time with us. Thanks for Jason, having me. Uh, Jason Thompson of uh, General Hospital, Kelly Alexander on The Kelly Alexander Show. Good job, Kelly. <laughs>